A, do you think self-regulation will work? Uh, if yes, why? If not, why? Do you agree with Sainath said that it can't work? If we lived in an ideal world, mm -hmm. then self-regulation self is the best form of regulation. But the fact is we do not live in an ideal world. Mm -hmm. We live in a world where there are all kinds of people masquerading as journalists. There are public relations practitioners mas uh, masquerading as journalists. There are all kinds of unsavory elements, rogue elements. There are blackmailers, there are crooks who also pretend to be journalists. Mm -hmm. So under this kind of a, the, uh, I mean, given the reality of the way the media works in this country, I think self-regulation only works up to a point and therefore you need laws and sometimes the existing laws are not enough, the existing laws on fraud, the existing laws on defamation. Uh, so we also have in this country a large number of regulatory authorities and, and, and some of these regulatory, regulatory authorities are inadequately in part. The, the classic case being the Press Council of India. Though it's a, uh, quasi judicial body set up by an act of parliament, it has no power to punish anybody. It can sure. only, you know, uh, put out strictures and right. admonish people. Its, its, its writ also does not extend beyond the print medium. So, so the Press Council of India is uh, an example of a, of a regulatory authority which is inadequately empowered. So, uh, when you talk about self regulation, it's good. But you don't, it doesn't always work. I mean, take the case of, say, the News Broadcasting Standards Authority. It's a self-regulatory body. Uh, but what about television channels which are not part of the News Broadcasters Association? Can the NBSA impose a fine on a television channel which is not a member of the NBA? And they have, but and, the and, channel and pay up. And, and as the, the head of the... News Broadcasting Standards Authority has already pointed out. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they have absolutely, they can do absolutely nothing about all those who are, you know, not members, non-members. So, so in a sense, even when you have self-regulatory bodies and the good guys agree to abide by the norms of the self-regulatory bodies and you impose fines and strictures, it doesn't work for the extreme elements, the fringe so elements. So what are your expectations from a consultation like this? Do you think anything will come of it or are you as pessimistic as Mr. Choker was, as Professor Choker was? The truth is I'm not particularly optimistic. This law commission will undoubtedly put out a set of very, very, uh, what should I say, desirable set of regulations. Mm -hmm. But I'm far from optimistic about our politicians, our lawmakers accepting these regulations or, or accepting these recommendations to change the law. What about those in the media? In uh, the I, think, I think there, uh, there is, uh, as has was pointed out uh, today, there's a nexus between business, between politicians and the media or large sections of the media, especially the corporate media except the big uh, and big media and media which is controlled by individuals with distinct political affiliations. So there is a nexus as in the case of the, the consultation paper or the recommendations of the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India on cross restrictions on cross media ownerships. So I, I, I personally don't see much happening. So you're saying even those within the media, I mean one thing is an act of parliament to get these recommendations into law. Uh, you're saying they won't do it because of their reasons, but you're saying even those within the media will not be very enthusiastically lobbying for this or pushing this Certainly forward. a large section of the corporate media, the big media in India, you know, they, they share this kind of classic love-hate relationship with politicians in power. They love them, they hate them. And it happens, it, it's, it's a two-way relationship. Politicians too want the media even if they publicly say there's a lot of lot that is wrong with the media. So despite the love-hate relationship which is overt, there's actually a, an understanding. Sometimes it's not so secret. It's, it's a covert kind of a coalition that exists. So beyond a point, neither the politicians nor the big corporate media would like to offend each other. So that's, that's what I think. That's why I think whether it be the recommendations of the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India or the recommendations that are expected to be put up by the Law Commission of India, it might meet the fate of hundreds and hundreds of 
committees and their papers and their recommendations, which have all said all the right things and all the good things. But nothing comes but of it. Very little or nothing has come out. Nevertheless, I am uh, optimistic to the extent that more and more people are talking about these issues, that websites, including News Laundry, are discussing these issues. Mm -hmm. I think the issue issues that concern the media, including issues relating to regulation of the media, self-censorship within the media. I think these issues are too important to be left to the media alone. Thank you so much.